the House of Representatives, they're not getting it at all. They do not want this deadline that has been given by the NCC for the Nigerians to get the national identity number. Uh, they are saying the time is very short and it should be done with a human face. And there again, you hear conversation about the fact that the minister in charge of uh, technology, uh, that's um, uh, Mr. Pantami, has Earlier this year in January, told people to make sure that they get their, I, their NIN or they risk having their SIMs um, banned. And then you think about the importance attached to this and the fight against the insurgency. Earlier on The Breakfast, if you've been following, you hear a conversation about somebody calling you and you don't know who that person is. Two days ago, I had to block two numbers back to back. Yesterday, I blocked another number because they just send you a message. This person is a thief, is wanted. So you'd be interested. So who is this? I don't know this person. And then you call, you fall victim. The, the getting these numbers will help check such situations. So what needs to give? How do we find a balance and ensure that we get what we need from these numbers, from the data that we'll get from these numbers. I have joining us to uh, look at this, um, a business analyst, Shegun Sopiton. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Felicity. Always a pleasure to be here. All right. It's a pleasure to have you. Um, so we're, we're going to, um, of course, kickstart with your thoughts on the urgency before we move into, of course, talking about the 774,000 uh, jobs that, um, you know, seems to be delayed. There seems to be some controversy with regards uh, when that will be kicking off. And uh, the, of course, uh, um, um, Festa Sekayam, of course, is in the mix of all of this. Um, so we would like to, of course, can bring your thoughts in on, on that one. But before that, quickly share your thoughts on the urgency with the NIN number. Um, it, the news broke yesterday. Do you think it's possible that these things can happen possible. in the next two weeks? Um, well, you know, I mean, it depends on how the government decides to approach this. Of course, it can happen in two weeks uh, because um, technically speaking, the information is available um, um, electronically already, right? So I saw a link that somebody shared somewhere yesterday from one of the, um, the major telcos um, directing their subscribers to go and add their NIN to their registration online. You know, I mean, that, that will take less than five minutes. So, so asking people to do this in two weeks, I think um, a lot of people saw this and panicked because they... They just visualized uh, the cues. First of all, you know, it, it means that you need to have an NIN. Majority of Nigerians don't have an NIN right now as we speak, right? So that, that creates a picture of, oh, I need to go to uh, NIMC to go get registered to start with before you now talk of linking that NIN to your SIM registration. So um, those are two different things, but linking to your SIM registration will happen very quickly and seamlessly online. So there is no problem with that. There's, there are no issues with um, COVID-19 restrictions. You're not gonna go queue anywhere. You can do it online from all I've seen. The challenge is that a lot of Nigerians do not have the national identity number yet uh, because the NIMC has not um, provided adequate logistics to make that happen seamlessly, quickly, over a short period of time. So okay. I think that's the real challenge for the two-week right. deadline. Um, so okay. uh, if they go ahead and enforce uh, the two-week deadline, then uh, we'll, we'll see how many people are affected. I think it will be too many. Okay. All right. We, we certainly will expand this conversation um, in the course of the breakfast, but let's let's see if we can focus this conversation on the 774,000 jobs um, that was supposed to come during the COVID-19 period. Uh, the House of Representatives has urged President Muhammad Bukhari to suspend this scheme. Now, Mr. Sopito, from day one, there's been controversy around these jobs. How does this latest position come to you? Um, our, our representatives um, usually, more often than not, come, come across as um, serving interests that are other than the reason that they were put there. Um, 
because I struggle to understand where they're coming from. <laughs> you know, I mean, um, I, I've, I've taken a close look at this program and it's, it's, um, it makes sense. It doesn't solve the unemployment problem, but it makes sense, right? So when they say, and if you look at the reasons that they've given for asking it to be suspended, it makes no sense. I mean, you're saying suspend the scheme, a scheme that is supposed, you know, all things being equal, to provide jobs for indigent, almost a million indigent Nigerians during a recession with huge um, ballooning unemployment, you say that that scheme should be suspended because there are controversies surrounding it. Controversies you created. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't understand where they're coming from. I think that rather than asking that the scheme be suspended, they should work out their differences with the ministry and with the NDE. And, and, and that should settle it. You know, clearly it looks as if the, uh, the DG of the NDE is on their side, you know, in quotes, side in quotes now, because there really shouldn't be any side in this. The, the, the sides are the side of Nigerians and the side of poverty and unemployment. That, that should be it. But there appears to be sides. And it looks as if the NDE... DG is on their side. So is, is, it, is, is, is do you think this is responsible for his sack? Because there was no actual reason given uh, why he was relieved of his uh, duty. Yeah, it would appear as though you know, you know, with government now, loyalty to the cause, loyalty to your superior, loyalty to your minister, and all of that is a very big thing. So it, it looks as if the DG was hobnobbing with some of the um, you know legislators and seemed to have been supporting. The idea that the legislators should also have a say, some sort of a say, in the number of people or how the people that will benefit from this will be selected. However, the, the, the problem is that if you look at the, 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 the program, the terms of reference of that program and the working modalities of, of, of that program, there is no place for um, um, legislators to have a say in how people are selected. There are special committees for each state legislators are not on that special committee. So if the legislators want to come, you know, and say, oh, you know, let's have a say because we have constituents that may also need this, fine. You know, that's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but they're going about it the wrong way. It's not a right for them. It's a privilege. So they shouldn't come at it with the force of office and saying this is something that must happen. And then because of that, you now scuttle, you know, a program that really in truth. Um, we need right, right now. Quickly, so for me, it's, it's I, very... I want I want your thoughts really on um, the details of this program. You you mentioned earlier that you know you felt it was a good idea, it was beneficial, it was going to be beneficial to you know a lot of Nigerians. Um, but there's also you know controversy about whether there was enough in the budget, the 2020 budget for it, and of course the 2021 budget. Some people might argue that the Nigerian government currently is struggling with funds here and there. Um, and so some of these things, you know, might be delayed. But I want your thoughts really on the details of the program and why you think it is um, such a great idea from the Nigerian government. Uh, because this is only a three-month you know, long program, I believe. Uh, I don't think it's more than three months. It was months. supposed yeah. to be. Uh, supposed to be, yeah. So, so why, why, you know, would every, any young Nigerian have any belief or, you know, expectations from this? Well, first of all, I don't think it's a great idea. <laughs> so I need to qualify that. I don't think it's a great idea because, okay. <laughs> because um, you know, the unemployment problem will never be solved by direct intervention by government in the labor market. It will never be solved. The government simply does not, just like you said, you know, the government doesn't have the funding. They don't have the capacity to employ the number of people that need to be employed. 27.1% unemployment rate in Nigeria. I mean, that's 22 million people without jobs. The government can't employ all of them. So the government's role in the employment problem is to provide the enabling environment, infrastructure, policies, legislation, and all of that to ensure that businesses thrive. Once businesses thrive, people will be employed. You know, um, or, or what I meant was, if an interventionist program in a situation where there is huge unemployment, it's better than nothing, right? So um, it's not a great idea, but it's better than nothing. I, I wanted to make that clear. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so, um, 
I, yeah. I was going to ask you, on the flip side of all of this, uh, Mr. Kiyamo has accused the National Assembly of trying to hijack the project, and now we're hearing from them that uh, the, pro uh, the project should be scrapped. Uh, do you think that, I mean, this gives some credence to the allegation by the minister? I think so. I mean, I, I, like I said before, I, I, I don't understand where they're coming from. And um, the only thing that, that, that one can think is, look, they're angry, they're upset, um, they're grieved um, with the way I mean, we all saw the, the spat between them and Keyamo. Keyamo, as we all know, is a fiery guy. You know, he just says what he's thinking. I didn't agree with his manner of approach during that sitting, but, you know, it is what it is. He is who he is. Um, and that appears to be what is in contention rather than the interest of Nigeria. Um, so he might have a point in saying maybe they want to hijack it or they just want to kill it off for ego. You know, our politicians are very funny people. Sometimes, in fact, in most cases, you know, the override, the, the, the thing that's driving them is not the common good. So in this case, it would appear as if it's just an ego war between um, the Minister of State and, and the legislators. And, you know, it would be sad if, uh, even though this is not the solution, it will be sad to see a program that will solve at least a part of the problems cracked because some grown-up adults can't manage their emotions what? and their egos. You know? Wouldn't you say the purpose, <laughs> I mean, it's been so long. The, the, the reason this conversation was amplified, this job, was because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And the COVID-19 pandemic has been with us since February last year. So, this year. I mean, this year, I beg your pardon. So now we're still arguing over how to go about distributing the money. Isn't the purpose being defeated by all of this? Well, because, you know, the, the COVID-19 pandemic is a cause and the effect of it is a different thing. Yes, the cause, in fact, even the cause itself is on a second wave, right? <laughs> but the effect of it is the recession we have now. And um, um, the, as long as we're in a recession, creating jobs for two months or three months or six months can only help. You know, it can't hurt you know, to have a program like this can only help. So, um, yes, it's late. And we know that our government is always slow with the way they go about their things, you know, the bureaucracy and uh, the inefficiencies and all of that. So, yes, it's absolutely late. It should have come earlier, you know. So if government had responded with a lot of programs like this um, um, on a larger scale, maybe we could have mitigated the recession. Who knows? Maybe it wouldn't have been this bad. Maybe we wouldn't have been talking of 6% negative six percent you know so um but better late than never as they say so <laughs> as long as we're still in the recession um a few more jobs won't won't sorry can only help bring us out all right um well lastly maybe in um, 30 40 seconds if you can quickly um for those who are not really sure what you know these seven hundred thousand jobs are you know all about quickly share with us what exactly are these jobs um where are these people going to be employed are they going to be in science and technology are they going to be working in some industries are they going to be in, in agriculture what exactly are these seven hundred thousand plus nigerians going to be um, engaged with in the three-month period actually Okay, so if you look at the name of the project, it's called the Special Public Works Program. So once you see the public works side of it, it gives you an idea of what's going on. So basically, they are going to be engaged in um, um, infrastructure, direct labor, direct labor to fix roads, direct labor to fix drainages, to clean schools, to clean roads. Um, some of the other uh, tasks that they put there on the terms of reference is to uh, manage traffic you know, at the community level. So these are rural jobs for people that are really, really poor. Um, it, it's not a new idea. In fact, according to them, this is in collaboration with the ILO. So um, basically, um, these are very, very low level jobs. Um, people just you know, doing the basic manual stuff and getting paid between 20 to 30,000 per month for doing that over the three month period. Um, they will be selected by committees from their various states. Um, representing, represented by uh, civil society organizations, uh, religious bodies, community leaders, will all be on that committee to pick the beneficiary, the 1,000 beneficiaries for each um, local government. So that's the nutshell of what the program will be about. So right. it, it, they're really, really very low-level 
just uh, meant to deal with the poverty problem. Mm. You don't sound very excited um, about <laughs> about the idea, no. but so it's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not it's not where we should be focusing our energy, to be honest. We need deeper solutions. Thank you so but, much. You know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Thank <laughs> you so much for your time Thank and you. for your thoughts this morning. I hope that we can bring you in again uh, when uh, these pleasure. things finally kick off. Always a pleasure. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, I wish we could look for something deeper. That uh, something. That's all that's ringing in my head now. I, I wish we could look for something deeper than this temporary. Two thousand. You don't. You don't. Twenty thousand. Give someone shot? twenty thousand naira for three months and you know feel like you've done him good. You've not, you've not really For some not. people, it's quite an amount of money. But <sighs> the, the whole bureaucracy, the whole controversy is um, giving me the sense of fatigue. Even the people that are anticipating that they will get something from this are already um, disillusioned. Let's see what happens in the coming days. If it will be scrapped or it will be implemented, it's left to them. It just looks like um, at the end of the day, it just pawns. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.